so tonight uh, we going to cover two topics. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So this is a uh, kind of like uh, short lectures. It's not really lectures. I uh, think just like an uh, introduction to the diet after Moscow and also the fundus drawing because uh, <clears throat> you need to uh, to really uh, to perform it in order to understand uh, what I'm saying. So basically what I'm giving you today is just the basic uh, things. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow who will be in the uh, suspect? Which team? Or is everyone uh, is everyone uh, will be in suspect or You'll be divided into two teams. Everyone. Uh, everyone, doctor. Everyone in the morning. Okay, very good. Um, doctor. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, are you sharing the slide? Because yeah, yeah. we couldn't see anything. We oh, just serious? see the black. Uh, okay, let me... Okay, because I thought you can see my, my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, can you see my slide now? Boleh nampak ke? No, no, yeah, doctor. Just see you enter the email. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, can you see my slide? Okay, very good. So I think I'm just going to use this uh, instead of the presentation. Okay, so basically, uh, let's see. Uh, so now uh, the content. Mm. Uh, Okay, uh, is it in the uh, presentation point uh, format now? Not yet, Dr. Not yet. Okay. I'm not really sure why is that. Ah. Ayo, what happened? Uh, so the question. Okay, let me start again. Okay, the uh, presentation mode. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
okay it's okay so okay so this is will be the content um so as for the learning objective so basically we just like to know uh the basic of the direct ophthalmoscope uh i mean the anatomy and then uh how to really uh i mean uh, how to turn it on and then how to really uh perform the uh fundoscopy okay <clears throat> so uh, so basically when we are doing a fundoscopy uh uh when we are looking at the posterior uh, so these are the things that we like to assess or we like to uh uh <clears throat> see so first of all uh from the anterior actually you can assess the cornea and then coming in uh you will be assessing the uh the anterior chamber uh, and then the lens the pupil and then after that uh posterior to the pupil uh, to the lens will be the vitreous body and then the optic disc and then the macula and then the retina the, the whole retina including the uh vessels <clears throat> Okay, so uh, what are the indication of the fundoscopy? Um, so basically, uh, optic nerve uh, will be the only uh, cranial, the only cranial nerve that is uh, readily uh, visible uh, to our eye. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, so and then another thing is uh, the assessment of the uh, fundus. Uh, so basically, we are looking for if there's any. Uh, uh, any abnormality to the optic disc, to the macula, or to the vessels, or to the retina. Uh, and then I, I think for you guys, uh, you, you have to appreciate what is papillo edema. Uh, or basically, it's a uh, optic nerve swelling uh, secondary to uh, increase intra intracranial pressure. And then what is the optic disc swelling? Uh, and then you need to know what what are the findings of uh, diabetic retinopathy and also uh, hypertensive retinopathy. So just a little bit on the history. Mm, so this is the uh, the first uh, the first person, uh, I mean the inventor of the direct ophthalmoscope. So you can see over here. This is the first uh, ophthalmoscope design. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, so as for the fundoscopy uh, in in ophthalmology in general, actually we have three uh, <clears throat> devices that we can use. Uh, the readily uh, uh, available is the direct ophthalmoscope and then we have the uh, binocular indirect mic uh, microscope or sometimes we call it as BIO and then the, the third would be the uh, slit lamp okay uh, so this is the uh, the BIO uh, binocular indirect ophthalmoscope and then, um, so, uh, but this one, uh, I think uh, uh, I'll show you to, guy, uh, to you guys tomorrow. Uh, so for tonight, we just concentrate on the direct ophthalmoscope first. <clears throat> uh, so this would be the, the comparison between the direct ophthalmoscope and also the, the, the direct and also the indirect. So our, di uh, our ophthalmoscope uh, is actually the direct. The indirect would be the, uh, the, slit, uh, the slit lamp and also the uh, BIO or binocular indirect uh, ophthalmoscope. <clears throat> okay, uh, so I think we don't have to go into detail yet on this. So then, uh, this would be the anatomy of uh, our ophthalmoscope. So we have uh, <clears throat> uh, two side, uh, which is uh, uh, this side. Uh, this one uh, will be uh, the side that will be uh, uh, towards the patient. Okay. And then, uh, then on the right side will be the, on the practitioner side. So, looking at the patient side, uh, we have the viewing window. So basically, we have a mirror over there that will reflect the, uh, the light from the light source to the mirror into the patient's retina, and then uh, reflected from the patient's retina into the uh, viewing window. And then we have a filter switch. And then on the side, uh, <coughs> I mean, under the filter switch, we have the aperture dial. And then at the side, it's actually the diopter uh, dial, and then the rheostat. Rheostat basically control the 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 <coughs> the illumination. Okay, and then on the practitioner side, uh, so basically you rest your brow uh, on the brow rest, and then we have a viewing window, uh, and then uh, just below the viewing window there'll be a diopter uh, power display, uh, and then the on and off switch. 
Okay. So I think this will be just uh, almost the same. So this is the the commonly available uh, direct ophthalmoscope, the wedge and then uh, actually there's a lot of uh, other uh, types of direct ophthalmoscope but uh, for the purpose uh, of our lecture today, I'll be using this uh, microscope, uh, sorry, uh, ophthalmoscope. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, nothing much to, to say over here. Uh, I think it is, uh, I mean, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you guys tomorrow. Okay. So this would be the type of filter that uh, not all, I mean, for this uh, direct ophthalmoscope, it, it does have all these uh, filters, uh, but sometimes uh, certain uh, direct ophthalmoscope uh, only have a few of these uh, filters. So basically, uh, but we do have uh, different sizes of uh, <clears throat> light size. Uh, we have the large, medium, and the small. And then sometimes we do have a half light. And then uh, we have the red free light, which is the green light. And then sometimes we have a slit and also blue light. And also sometimes we do have a grid. Okay. So basically, this is the, uh, what we call as... <clears throat> uh, as uh, 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 how how does the the light travel in the direct ophthalmoscope? Okay, as I mentioned before, that the from the light source uh, to the mirror, there there is a mirror, and then from the mirror, it is reflected on the patient's retina, and then from patient's retina, we reflect it back into the uh, view window towards the uh, observer's uh, retina. O stands for observers and P is for uh, patient. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> uh, let's go into the uh, how to use uh, the uh, direct ophthalmoscope. So basically, we have three things, uh, patient preparation, then we have the uh, ophthalmoscope preparation, and then the examinations of the patient. So uh, <clears throat> so when, we, uh, when you are performing direct ophthalmoscope, so basically, uh, you should inform to the patient uh, what you are going to do, uh, and then you should explain uh, what what the patient will uh, will uh, will uh, I mean we will shine a bright light uh, into the eyes. So uh, just inform that uh, not to be <clears throat> don't be afraid, uh, and then uh, if uh, they feel uh, uncomfortable, just uh, let us know. Okay, uh, you should ask the permission uh, before examining the eyes. Um, <clears throat> so, in general, uh, you can uh, examine the uh, fundus actually without mydratics, without using any dilating drops. Okay. Uh, so, what you need to do is you should dim the lights uh, in the room and then have the patient fix uh, their gaze on object across the room so that, uh, so that uh, they, uh, they, they will fix on uh, target, a distant target. Okay, so uh, this is just some uh, information about the dilating uh, pupil. Uh, so we we have uh, for the uh, dilating or midratic uh, drops, uh, it could be a parasympathetic antagonist or a sympathetic agonist. Okay, so as for the parasympathetic antagonist, we have the tropica mite. And then as for the sympathetic agonist, we have the final frame. Okay. So, uh, uh, so just now we did mention about patient preparation. Then ophthalmoscope preparation, just make sure that you have a good, uh, I mean, the, 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 the powers is uh, the... Uh, your your battery is in good. Uh, I mean, your direct ophthalmoscope is in good condition, uh, and then after that, uh, okay, adjusting the ophthalmoscope. Uh, okay, so what you can do is you can use uh, the direct ophthalmoscope with or without your glasses. If you prefer to use your glasses, first you uh, set everything to zero. Okay. Uh, so you have to take into consideration your uh, refractive error and also patient's refractive error. So let's say if you don't want to use your <coughs> uh, your your glasses, so you need to dial in your refractive error. 
Uh, so usually the minus lenses, they usually the red numbers to correct the myopia. So if you have uh, you are short sighted, which is uh, you have problem seeing the uh, distance or myopia. So then you put in uh, the power of uh, let's say uh, your your glasses is about minus four, so you done in minus four, okay. And then as for the plus uh, plus uh, lenses, is uh, usually uh, uh, black numbers. Uh, is for the hypometropia. Okay. So, uh, so I think let's not go into this first. Okay. So, how do you uh, find the retina? So, <clears throat> what you should do is uh, uh, in the darkened room, uh, so you ask the patient to fix on the distance uh, target. And then, so basically, what you should do is uh, ask them to really fix on the target and don't follow the light yet. <clears throat> and then, uh, you try to shine uh, into the patient's eye from um, uh, from the distance, looking for the uh, red reflex. Okay, once you have that red reflex, fix on the dead re uh, red reflex, and then go slightly temporal, about 15 degree, and then follow the red, uh, red reflex, and then uh, you come uh, near to the patient. Okay? If you do it right, at, uh, once you go in, uh, actually you can directly see the the optic disc. Okay, and then uh, once you see the optic disc, uh, you need to uh, to see the whole optic disc. And because uh, the problem with the ophthalmoscope, it is uh, really magnified. It's about uh, fifteen times of the normal uh, normal size. So you can only see parts of the optic disc rather than the whole optic disc. So you really need to uh, to move around in order to see the whole optic disc. And then after you completed the examine the optic disc, only then you follow the vessels, looking for if there's any abnormality uh, uh, <clears throat> near the vessels, all four quadrants. And then the last, uh, lastly, uh, once you finish uh, examining the whole area, only then you ask the patient to uh, look directly into the light. And then that's when you examine the macula. Okay. So, uh, so what are we are looking for? Uh, so, uh, the findings. Uh, what we should uh, uh, report as a finding. So, first of all, because we are looking for the red reflex, we need to report uh, about the red reflex. Is it uh, does the uh, red reflex play uh, present, or is it absent, or is it really uh, is it uh, really absent, or is it just diminished? Uh, especially if you are talking about if there's any corneal opacity or if there's any lens opacity such as uh, in cases of cataract. And then uh, after that, you you report your finding on the optic disc. How does it look like? Is it uh, atrophy uh, or is the optic disc uh, swollen? Or if there's any, any abnormalities, is there any uh, <clears throat> hemorrhages uh, on the optic disc? Or is there any... Um, any signs of glaucoma, uh, glaucoma on the optic disc. And then, uh, after you completed uh, examining the optic disc, then you see all the blood vessels. Uh, how does it uh, look like? Uh, is it a normal blood vessels or is it a tortuous blood vessel or is there any uh, hemorrhages? <clears throat> and then, uh, after that, the last the last thing that you would like to examine would be the macula. Okay, and then looking at the optic disc, so, this is actually the picture if you uh, examine the fundus using a, a slit lamp or BIO, you can see the whole optic disc. But if you are using a direct ophthalmoscope, you can only see part of it. So, over here, I'm just trying to show you what is the cup disc ratio. Okay. So, basically, you can see over here, the disc is actually <coughs> the outer area of the whole optic disc while the cup is actually the inner area. So, the area between this and the cup, cup is the inner, inner part, and then uh, the outer part will be the disc, the, uh, the edge of the disc. So, uh, this is the neuroretinal rim in between. So, this is, uh, if we are talking about in a glaucoma patient, we are assessing the, the thickness of this uh, neuroretinal rim. If it's, uh, so, so, what does it mean by uh, CDR ratio of 0 0.3 and what does it mean by CDR ratio or cup disc ratio of 0 0.9? So let's say it's a 0 0.3. That means 
let's say that the the vertical height of the optic disc is about 1.5 uh, millimeter. Okay, in 0.3 is uh, roughly the, the the vertical height of the cup will be somewhere around uh, 0 0.3 will be somewhere around 4, uh, 0.4 or 0.5 millimeter. So if you ratio it, you can get around 0 0.3. But let's say that uh, the vertical height of the cup is about uh, 1 or 1 1.2, uh, there will be somewhere around uh, seven, uh, uh, 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 uh, cup disc ratio. So basically CDR ratio, if, uh, I mean the proper way you have to, to, to measure the vertical height, but most of the time we just eyeballing the <coughs> the, the the height uh, and then we just estimate the ratio okay uh, okay so over here i'm just showing the on the left side will be the normal optic disc while on the right side is the glaucomatous optic disc you can see the colors okay uh, on the left side it is still pink uh, and then on, on the right side is already uh, pale. This is pale optic disc. You can see the cup disc ratio over here is almost 0 0.95. And then uh, you can see that the, the vessels that coming out from the optic disc uh, is like suddenly appeared uh, at the edge of the optic disc. So this is what, uh, what we call as a bayonetting, just like bayonet. Uh, Okay, and then next will be the macula. Uh, so macula, the location will be somewhere around uh, temporal and slightly inferior, inferior temporal to the optic disc. Okay, so in the direct ophthalmoscope, everything it is uh, <coughs> uh, is erect uh, and with, uh, is er erect. So that means it, it is not inverted. But if you are looking through uh, BIO or slit lamp, it is usually Inverted, <clears throat> okay, uh, and then next will be the the retinal vessels, okay. Uh, you can see, <clears throat> uh, what are the differences between the uh, the artery and veins? Uh, if you see from the direct ophthalmoscope, so you can see that usually the vein will uh, we have a darker shade compared to the artery, and then usually artery you can see somehow it's like uh, uh, it is uh, usually smaller than the the vein, okay. Um. Uh, yeah, I think that be on the vessels, and then just some findings on the uh, diabetic retinopathy on the left side. You can see that there is actually <coughs> looping of the vessels, and also you can see uh, uh, there's actually uh, a lot of uh, new vessels over here, and then on the right hand side there is actually your heart exudate. And also uh, some blood hemorrhages uh, at the inferior uh, arcades. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> shown over here on the right side, this is another. Uh, this is actually an Irma. So uh, tomorrow, uh, I'll try to show you guys if we have any patient uh, that does have this problem. Uh, the Irma sometimes may look like a new vessels. But actually, if you look at uh, look uh, properly, you can actually differentiate between Irma and new vessels. Usually, uh, new vessels, <clears throat> it is more superior uh, or, or more superficial to the vessels. And then most uh, sometimes it will uh, crawl into the vitreous, uh, vitreous body. But while in the Irma, it is just a uh, connection or it is actually intraretinal uh, microvascular abnormality. So it is a uh, communication between uh, <coughs> atrials and venules of the uh, retinal vessels. So usually it is uh, slightly deeper to the vessels, and then um, and then uh, usually it is not leaked compared to the new vessels. <coughs> okay. Uh, so another new uh, on the left side is the new vascularization at the disc. And then uh, on the right side is the new vascularization elsewhere. <clears throat> and then over here, uh, you can see on the left side, it, this is uh, looking at the macula, that is actually the normal macular reflex. But on the right side, you can see that that normal reflex, 
that the uh, almost uh, dark, uh, it almost uh, completely gone. So actually, if you see it uh, through uh, BIO or slit lamp, you can actually uh, appreciate that it is elevated. But by using uh, direct ophthalmoscope, uh, <coughs> it is difficult uh, to appreciate it. Unless you have seen few, only then you can really say that this is a, 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 a macula edema. <clears throat> okay. And then this is another uh, findings of an age-related macular degeneration. So in this picture, it is actually a, a subretinal hemorrhages. Why? Uh, why did I say it, it is a subretinal? Because you can see that the, on the, uh, the inferior arcades, you can still uh, see the vessels uh, overlying the hemorrhages. Okay, that's uh, that's how you gauge uh, the depth of the uh, bleeding or any lesion. So you use the surrounding structures, uh, as in, the, in this picture, you will see the inferior arcades. You can you can still see the inferior arcades. <clears throat> so that means that the the hemorrhages it is deep to the vessels. So most likely it is either intraretinal or could be subretinal. <clears throat> and this is uh, what a macula star look like. Okay, especially in cases of. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, optinuri, right, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, in cases of uh, uh, grade, grade four hypertensive retinopathy, or could be opti uh, <clears throat> uh, optic neuritis in cases of uh, infective optic neuritis. Okay, uh, this is just uh, showing astrocytoma uh, in the in the fundus. And this what uh, retinal blastoma may look like. This is actually an endophytic type, which is uh, it grows into the vitreous. And then this is what a uh, ret uh, retinitis pigmentosa or RP looks like. You can see at the mid periphery uh, <clears throat> that there is a uh, like a blackish uh, multiple spots. You can see over there. <clears throat> actually, if you uh, if you see it. Uh, <clears throat> With the direct after Moscow, sometimes you can uh, you can see that it is a uh, looks like a bone specule. Okay, so that is usually uh, how we describe the retinitis pigmentosa lesion. And then uh, over here you can see that the optic disc is slightly pale. The macula is actually the <clears throat> look a bit uh, edematous actually in this in these pictures. And then this is actually uh, looking at the uh, HIV retinopathy. So you can see there is a multiple uh, cotton white spot uh, or uh, nearby the vessels, or we call it a cotton wool spot. Okay, and then this is the CMV uh, retinopathy. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> this is what we call as a pizza pie uh, appearance, or so sometimes uh, we call it as a uh, bush fire appearance. Okay, I think uh, that will be my last slide for this uh, direct ophthalmoscope. Is, uh, do, do you have any questions so far? Uh, doctor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we see a so, block artery? Block artery, okay. Sometimes you can see. Yes, actually, as, especially if the, uh, if the <coughs> embolus is big. Okay, yeah, but most of the time it's a bit difficult to really appreciate it uh, unless you have seen a few. But uh, yeah, basically yes, you can see a uh, block a three. <coughs> okay. No, okay, thank you, doctor. Okay, so is there any question for this uh, first part? Uh, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay, now, uh, what do you know about the, the cup this ratio? What is the normal ratio? What is the abnormal ratio? So, anyone would like to help Ibrahim? Um, 
is it the the normal ratio uh, one third? The cup is one third from the optic disc, is it? So so usually if we say that this is a normal cup disc ratio, what 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 is the number that we usually quote? Uh, 0 0.3. Yeah, it's somewhere around zero. Usually in general, we say this is in general, but you uh, really need to see uh, the, 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 this itself to say whether this is a normal cup this ratio or not. Because sometimes the cup this ratio might be in the normal value, but still the, there is abnormalities at the optic disc. But if, we, if we're just uh, talking about cup this ratio, so basically the normal would be uh, uh, less than 0 0.3. Okay. But if the cup disc ratio is about 0 0.5 and above, it is uh, suspicious of uh, optic neuropathy, which is most of the time would be the uh, glaucoma. And then uh, if we are talking about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or 0 0.95 or complete cupping, there is basically, uh, there is optic neuropathy. Okay, but if it's a 0 0.5, it is a bit suspicious. So that is when we do a serial uh, assessment uh, to really determine whether this is a, a normal uh, optic disc or is this an abnormal optic disc. Okay, Ibrahim, does, does, it, uh, does it answer your question? Okay, okay. Okay, let me just uh, stop sharing this one. Uh, let's go to the next... Uh, <coughs> Uh, so uh, next one will be the uh, the fundus drawing. Okay, so as for this one, I think we can just go quickly because this is more of like um, a guideline uh, how to draw a fundus, okay? So basically, this is the, the content of our discussion. Uh, so basically, why we draw fundus, uh, this is actually for the records, uh, for our own records and also uh, how we communicate with other specialists. Uh, especially if we are talking about if we are referring patient uh, because uh, previously we don't have all the fundus photo but nowadays we can just send patient <coughs> to other specialists uh, with the fundus photo but uh, still fundus drawing is actually if you able to draw the fundus so basically you you understand what's happening uh, in the fundus okay uh, so basically uh, <coughs> So uh, how how we draw the fundus? So after we have examined the the fundus using the direct ophthalmoscope, only uh, then you need to uh, document. Uh, so uh, how do you document? First with words, second with the drawing. So with the drawing, uh, so basically, uh, <clears throat> what you should do is, uh, 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 okay, uh, thing. I think we we'll just let me just uh, go through this uh, lecture first, and then I'll show you a little bit on how uh, we should draw fundus. Okay, <clears throat> so basically we 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 should <coughs> documents all the findings. Okay. Um. <coughs> um okay. Um. So I think this one is this is a for if you are if we are using the uh, BIO. So this is how we uh, hold the lens, okay. And then uh, sometimes we need to uh, use clear uh, depression uh, to see the the periphery structures, <coughs> okay. 
<coughs> so this is the retina chart or cartograph. So basically, um, I personally don't use it uh, anymore. <coughs> but still, I think it is uh, worth for you guys to know about this uh, retina chart or cartograph. So basically, we have about three concentric lines with the center part <coughs> would be your uh, your macula. <coughs> and then, um, uh, <coughs> so the, the, out, <coughs> the outer ring would be your, uh, <coughs> it represents the, uh, your ciliary process. And then, <coughs> in the middle is the oral serata and then, uh, the inner would be your equator. <coughs> okay. So as for the color coding, usually for uh, for retina vessels, uh, if there are any subretinal fluid, any detached retina or edema, we use a <coughs> blue colors. Uh, <coughs> uh, for red, uh, usually for attached retina, but we don't we don't color the whole retina actually. So most of the time we don't really use a red for the attached retina. But we use for the hemorrhages or if there's any retina there, any microangulums of uh, pre-retinal neovascularization. Or uh, as for the yellow, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me just try to highlight it. Okay, uh, yellow is actually for extruded if there's any inflammation for cotton wool spots, uh, drusens, uh, subretinal fibrosis, atrophic areas or emanatic mass uh, lesion or if there's any white deposits on the retina. As for the green, uh, if there's any media opacity, especially uh, cataract, uh, if there's any vitreous debris or hemorrhages, uh, or if there's any pre-retinal fibrosis or membrane, and also the white string or the PV deposit vitreous detachment. And then for brown, usually the uveal tissue, if there's any, you can see on the retina. Melanotic lesion, uh, and the other corridor detachment. As for the black, if there's any scar, uh, retinal pigmentation, uh, especially we're talking about the uh, retinitis pigmentosa, uh, pigment clumping, or the RPE. Okay. Uh, so as for the lesion, usually we use the the disc diameter uh, as the <clears throat> our as uh, the gauge. To, to say uh, how big is the lesion. Okay, and then as for the lesion, uh, when we draw, uh, we can really uh, pinpoint uh, the, loca the location of the lesion. Okay, I think this one is for you guys to see later. Uh, there's a lot of things to see over here. Uh, I think... Maybe later I'll share, uh, share this uh, slide with uh, Fat and then he will share with everyone. Okay, I think this is a bit too much. Uh, I'll just show you some of the possible findings. So basically over here you can see, um, you can see the, the optic disc. Uh, A is the... Uh, you can see it's actually elevated, the optic disc. While in B, it's look like normal. Uh, C, uh, sorry, uh, F, uh, the, the cup disc ratio is actually slightly big. big. Uh, but in E, you can really see that the cup disc ratio is uh, quite big. I think uh, for me, uh, the E will be somewhere around 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 uh, cup disc ratio. Okay. Uh, so, and then this is uh, how a retina detachment looks like. Okay, you can see that uh, the, the inferior part, you can see that the retina is attached while uh, the superior part, it is actually uh, elevated. Uh, you, can, you can follow the vessels, uh, the superior arcades, it is actually elevated. So, this is how does a, a retina detachment looks like. And then this is your typical uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, fundus. And then over here you can see that it is, it is quite busy uh, with uh, new vessels at the disc and also new vessels as well. Okay, uh, let me show you. Uh, okay. 
Okay, uh, so can you see my white screen now? Okay, yes, okay. Doctor. Okay, very good. So basically, uh, I think in your uh, logbook, uh, they already uh, give you a, a circle, right? Okay. So let's say if you are talking about uh, this is would be the right eye. So basically, uh, so I'll be using different, uh, different. Okay. So usually in the center, okay. Uh, in the center, would be your macula, right? Okay. Let's say uh, your macula, if there's no abnormality, so usually we use a cross. So that means most of the time it is uh, flat. So as I see before that macula in relation to the optic disc, it is usually inferior temporal. So in the right eye, if you draw the optic disc where it should be. Over here, number one, or over here on the right eye. Anyone? Okay, so basic. Ah, uh, yeah. So you, uh, your optic this will be temporal or nasal to the macula. Let's say this is the right eye. Nasal. Nasal. So it will be in the uh, near number one, isn't it? Am I right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good idea. Okay. Uh, so uh, your optic this should be on the. Uh, number one. So we say that it is inferior temporal. So uh, so since the center is the macula over here. So this is the macula. So we go slightly nasal and superior. So usually you should draw your optic disc over here. Okay. And then uh, optic disc. Uh, so you have the uh, this edge and also the cup edge. And then comes the vessels going out from the optic disc. Okay. Okay. And then, based on the findings of your examination, so you draw whatever you can see uh, in the fundus. Uh, let's say if the patient is a, a post a PRP, so uh, we didn't, usually we did not ask a, a scarring at the peripheral. So, uh, if you say that this is a complete PRP, so this is how we usually draw the fundus, okay? Okay, so let's say if the patient have a, a scar, scar, okay, scar, usually we did not ask, uh, we draw the, the shape of the scar and then we color it black, okay? But let's say if uh, this is a diabetic retinopathy patient, uh, so uh, patients are already proliferative uh, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let's say if there is a new vessels at the disc, so you just draw. How does the new vessels look like? Okay. But if it's elsewhere, just draw the location. Okay. And then the other thing is your dot hemorrhage or blood hemorrhage. But if it's, it's uh, let's say, a vitreous hemorrhage, okay, usually vitreous hemorrhage, we did not buy uh, using a, a green colors. Okay, let's say a large vitreous hemorrhage over here. So your color is green. Okay. Same goes if you are drawing on the left side. So if you are drawing on the left side, uh, if you are drawing on the left side, the same thing. This is the, the circle, okay, left eye. So the center will be your macula. Let's say the macula, uh, okay, and then uh, your optic This will be somewhere around here, okay. Let's say this is a, 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 <coughs> glaucoma, a glaucoma patient, okay. You see that when I'm drawing, let's say this is a, a absolute glaucoma, Our patient is actually blind already. And then uh, the cup, the cup is full. Usually, we draw the the the, the superior inferior arcade, the superior inferior temporal arcade near to the uh, nasal nasal uh, nasal arcades. 
indicates that it is already shifted towards the nasal or what we call as nasalization of the vessels. Okay, and let's say that this patient has a macula edema. So you draw or you shade with a blue color in the macula. And let's say that this patient uh, have a lesion uh, or a scar or any clumping. Uh, okay, you use black colors. Or let's say that this patient have a cotton wool spot. So you use a, a yellow color, cotton wool spots. Okay. Okay. So I think that's it. Uh, any questions? Uh, so doctor, we have to draw the uh, pigs and also vessels coming out too for every drawing. Yeah, yes, because you should, you, yeah, because uh, definitely we like to know, uh, uh, because uh, uh, um, uh, let's say you, you, you see the fundus and then you, you draw it differently. So we are assuming that is what you see. So if you didn't uh, draw the vessels, no, so that means uh, we, are, we are assuming that you didn't see the, the vessels. Because you have to, to report whatever findings uh, or whatever things that you can observe, right? In the fundus. So that, that is the purpose why we ask uh, you to draw the fundus, actually. Because uh, that is uh, how we assess uh, whether you are <clears throat> able to see the fundus or not. So if you don't draw whatever you see, so that means uh, we are assuming that you are uh, unable to see uh, that. Uh, structures or lesions. Uh, does it make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Any any other question? Uh, sir, doctor, one more. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, for the, I mean, if the CD ratio is not uh, normal, then uh, what should we draw? I mean, using Okay. Using what color? So usually, uh, for me personally, I think I just uh, use a uh, black colors. So let's say this is a, uh, optic disc. Okay. So um, when we say that this is a normal, usually, this is how we draw. Okay. So you can see that the vertical height of the 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 disc in relation to the to the cup is, is almost uh this is what we call as. CDR as uh, about zero about zero point three. Yeah? It's not really because if uh, I mean the proper way you have to measure or you have to uh, measure the vertical height of the the disc and then uh, to the uh, to the cup. Okay, but let's say the, uh, we are talking about CDR of zero point seven. Okay, usually uh, we have to draw the inner cup slightly bigger to indicate that. Uh, this is a, a cup disc ratio but as for the colors usually I just uh, use black I think uh, there is no really a code uh, for the it's just the shape of the uh, the disc but let's see if you see any hemorrhages okay like a splinter hemorrhage at the the, the disc then you use uh, <clears throat> or if you see any any lesion uh, if there are any scar nearby or let's say you see, you see a, a peripapillary atrophy. So usually what I use is a black color. Okay, and then you shade it. This is what I call as uh, peripapillary atrophy. Okay. Okay, Fatin? Okay, is it clear? Okay. Yes, Ibrahim, do, do, do you have any question? No, uh, no, you 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 don't have to. You just you just uh, let uh, unless uh, you see there's a big lesion over there, then you draw and color that lesion, but you don't color the the background. That's right. As I've mentioned before, even though in the in the lectures I did mention that 
uh, red color is for the normal retina but you don't have to color the whole retina actually you just uh, draw and color the lesion okay okay uh, any last questions Okay, so I think everyone, I uh, hope everyone understand uh, what I'm trying to, to share here. Uh, okay. Okay, I think that would be all. Uh, so thank you everyone for join, joining in uh, class tonight. So I hope to see you guys uh, tomorrow in the clinic. Uh, maybe we can have some uh, session. Uh, on the direct ophthalmoscope uh, because I think uh, a hands-on would be much better, much, much better than the, uh, the lectures itself. Okay? Uh, so, I think uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you tomorrow, inshallah. So, later I will send uh, <coughs> uh, the I attend link uh, to find and then he will distribute to everyone. Okay? Sorry, I didn't uh, give it earlier. So, I think that's all for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's close our class today with Tashbika Farah. So, applause.